So welcome back guys, it's Cringy Star, Cringe Pie. I've said that probably five, six times. And hopefully today we'll be going through situational judgment. And with situational judgment, I'd probably say it's one of the easiest sections of the UK cap. It's definitely a lot easier in terms of timing. You have a lot more time just to think about the question and you're not rushed for timing. I've never heard the case of someone who said that with situational judgment, they were unable to finish the section. Hopefully now I'll guide you through the medical ethic pillars, um, the four standard, and the first one is autonomy. So bear in mind, my handwriting isn't amazing. Now autonomy is the fact that the patient has the right to decide what their treatment includes. For example, Jehovah Witnesses may choose to refuse blood transfusions. For their own religious reasons, you have to respect their choice. Yes, you may not want them to die. Yes, if they're Gillick competent, and that's one thing hopefully you will learn in the interview course, but Gillick competency, once they're able to, or once they have the ability to be Gillick competent, and that's essentially understanding responding rationally as well as being able to weigh up the consequences of their action you will not be able to force the patient and you essentially have to respect their decision no matter what they choose now another pillar is beneficence let me just write that down beneficence now that is to have compassion and to take the patient's best interest. For example, if it's the case that they are unconscious and you have to make a decision for them, you have to ensure that you do decisions in the best interest of the patient, which is survival. And by you doing something in the best interest of the patient, you need to ensure what you're doing is legal. So you can't say, I want to ensure that this person has the best possible death, which is the best for him. That's not allowed. Any cases that break the law, is automatically a no-no so we try to stay away from that preference is to do the best for the patient the best now another pillar is non-maleficence now non-maleficence is for the doctor not to harm the patient whether it be through their treatment plan whether it be from medical neglect so usually medical neglect is something that will be mentioned in the situational judgment that should say an I medical neglect so any cases where you leave your duty when you shouldn't be is an absolute no-no it goes against the fundamental four pillars another thing is justice the last and final pillar is that you allocate resources fairly so you don't discriminate on financial racial background skin color anything any person who takes priority in treatment is one who has a greater clinical need you do not discriminate on any other grounds and hopefully i'll explain the difference of non-maleficence and beneficence in another video um, but as for now, those are the four. So just to summarize, autonomy, beneficence, non-maleficence, and justice. Let's move on to the next video. If you have very minimal time, I have an ebook that is present in the link description. And that's my killer, killer, killer tips. Essentially, I explained them in the video, but there are some tips in there that I haven't really explained. Basically, catch you guys on the other side. Why is it hard for me? Why is it hard?